Hello connectors, this is the Weirdo Maximil. Welcome to Iris and the Giant Weirdo Spotlight. I said it opposite, but we are keeping it, Jason. Yes, your name is now Jason. Be happy, Jason. <laughs> so, this is a game that I wanted to play. Well, a type of game I wanted to play. The rogue card guy games. I know I have heard it from things like Deepest Dungeons and everything like that. Or something like that, but... I am so happy to play this game and very much so because disclaimer this is a review copy so the developer gave me a review copy to do an opinion and everything like that so thank you very much for the developers for giving me the review code everything else is my opinion so the recording my opinion this whole editing this is all my opinion they only provided me the key that's it so with that said First, let's explain what Iris and the Giant is all about. So, Iris and the Giant is a game, like I said, it's like a rogue type card game. Well, you have to pick a card to protect yourself, to heal yourself, but more specifically, you need to kill the enemies and go up the stairs to go to the next step, to the next step, to the next step, until you reach the final boss and you need to beat the boss to beat the game. Simple and sweet. I actually beat this game in like four to six hours, so it's not that long of a game. And if you're lucky, you can beat it maybe earlier than that. Of course, there's, it's a little bit more complex like that. I'll explain it like that. Like for example, there's a thing called memory. Well, it's basically like a diamond shape with a circle chopped in the middle. And that memory will give you a sight of a story where it will say, oh, why is he feeling like that? And you can use those memory to power up your character even stronger and everything like that. With that said, that's leveling outside the game. Leveling inside the game, there's technically three ways to level up this game. Quote unquote, leveling up. You need to get enough red crystals to get power. You need to kill enough monsters to basically get power or get cards. Or you had to kill a boss like enemies to get special conditions. So for example, you could get like axe special condition. Well, if the enemies are still alive after you use an axe, they get stunned for one turn. Now, you don't always have to use it. In fact, I advise you to not always use leveling up like that. Because sometimes you want to prefer taking chess over leveling up your character. Because if you lose your health, like if you lose all of your health, or you don't have any playbook card, you lose. There's no ifs or buts about it, you lose. So keep in mind that you need to have enough cards in your deck and you have to have enough health. So that's what the one thing I actually loved about this game is like, you can level up, you have to think about it. Okay, do I want to level up my character more or do I want more cards? And I want more cards and I want to level up, so on and so forth. Now, everything is fine. The monsters are actually pretty cool as well. There's the axe monster, sword monster, arrow monsters, and actually there's also monsters that defend others, so on and so forth. There's bomb monsters, everything like that. And, well, other than the cool monsters, music is pretty awesome as well. It's simple. It doesn't have to be efficient, but well, it is efficient. It's simple yet efficient. It's pretty catchy. And honestly, I wouldn't want any more than what they given me in this music. It's like you are thinking about it. It's like, hmm, should I use this or should I use that? I definitely want to use this and you know what I'm saying. So you could basically be like, huh, do I want to use the sword or do I want to kill the enemy behind me using a bomb or arrow or like that? Now, you're not going to beat this game in first try. Obviously, you won't because you need memories outside the game and imaginary friend. I'll get more into that later. But this game is short and sweet, like I said, four to six hours. And honestly, it looks fun. It's a fun game. And yeah, it's if you want a short and sweet game, this is pretty much it. The story concept is also pretty amazing, if you ask me. It's about her insecurity, and actually, I want to do an expressing with gaming series about her insecurity about it as well, because this sparked my interest. <laughs> Let's just say that. This has actually sparked my interest. 
probably gonna be the next one probably not we'll see how it goes but the more i want to see the story the more i wanted to do like oh i want to know more about herself how do i solve this etc etc but that's also where things are gonna go negative here because the only reason i continued playing this game wasn't because of the gameplay it was interesting and I, it's fun game but it, for me it gets dull the gameplay actually gets dull and for me the story was the only reason why i was driven to play this game more it just might be me keep in mind this is a genre this is the first time i playing this kind of genre and it just might not be my cup of tea but it wasn't fun for me after a while it well i wouldn't say it wasn't fun for me but it wasn't as fun for me as I was playing it the first two or three times. Let's keep it like that. Make sense? Make sense. And while there was a lot of variable monsters in this game, for me, I think the biggest problem with the gameplay was there weren't any much variant in gameplays. Like, so we had different weapons and heal and protect me and so on and so forth. But that's about it. I think there was there's something more to interest me something i i really can't describe it but i wish there was something more from this game that would influence me to play this game more because for me is right now it's just cards heal kill move on of course there's imaginary friends well you can get those imaginary friends if you do a certain conditions like reach the eighth floor in 24 turns without any imaginary other any other imaginary friends and so on and so forth but for me that doesn't i don't think that's enough for me and because of the simplicity of the game which four into six hours i don't think it's worth 50 dollars or 50 euros I think it's more worth ten dollars, but yeah. I think I think the biggest problem for me is it isn't because there's lack of gameplay or anything, but because I think it's so short and it's such a simple concept, you sword and everything, that I don't feel like I want to spend fifty dollars on this. I might sound really offensive with this, but if it's in ten dollars or less, I would honestly say it's worth my price. But fifty dollars. I think it's going a little bit over what I want to pay for this game. I think I'm saying the same thing, I know, but... I would highly suggest getting this game around when there, it's a sale, like summer sale or winter sale or so on and so forth. But with a, whether you want to get it now or get it later, I still like this game. I would recommend this game, especially to people who like road card games like games. It's good, it talks about emotion, it talks about insecurity, I would actually recommend it to emotion and insecurity people. And yeah, it makes me wonder how many of those kind of games exist and I haven't played. Developers, please let me know if you make any other future games if you ever see this video and everything like that. But yeah, this is the way to Maxim. Signing out. Thank you to the developers for once again giving me the review code and thank you so much for watching this video as well viewers and the developers. I take a shot every time I say developers. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.